What hit us? Small asteroid fragments. This morning. How big were those? Those were nothing. The size of basketballs. And... Space rock. Asteroid. Asteroid. Asteroid that we... For the first time in U.S. history, Congress has quietly triggered a space defense protocol, an action once reserved for world-ending scenarios. But what forced lawmakers to push that button, and what aren't they telling us? They moved fast. No press conference, no leaks at first. Emergency briefings began inside secure rooms on Capitol Hill. NASA was called in. The Pentagon was called in. Space Force, too. This was not a drill. It was treated like an operation. Staffers were told to clear schedules. Phones stayed outside. The agenda was short and sharp. Planetary defense. A threat window. A decision clock. Contingencies on the table. Early whispers pointed to one name. 2024 YR4. A fast mover. Newly tracked. Close enough to matter. Probabilities spiked. Thresholds tripped. Lines lit up worldwide. IAWN traffic surged. SM PAG eyes went to red folders. But that's not the whole story, not even close. Senior aides hinted at more than a single trajectory. Patterns, clusters, behavior that raised eyebrows in the room. It wasn't just a rock. It was a systems test. Congress flipped the switch anyway. They chose readiness now. They brought science and defense to the same table. They asked what can be launched and how fast. They asked what we can't say in public yet. Because what came across NASA's radar in January 2025 wasn't just another asteroid. It was something the U.S. government had never publicly reacted to before. It started like a whisper through the astronomy network, a new object on the edge of detection, tagged 2024YR4. At first, it looked routine, one of the thousands of space rocks drifting harmlessly past our planet every year. But within 48 hours, the math changed. Subtle, almost imperceptible shifts in its path sent orbit models haywire. That's when the alerts began to cascade. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory flagged an unusual probability spike, a 1% chance of impact, then two, then four. In the world of planetary defense, that number isn't small. It's the line between keep watching and get ready. Three global observatories confirm the same thing. YR4's course was converging, faster than expected. No one said, impact. Not yet. But the quiet tone in the encrypted messages said enough. The International Asteroid Warning Network lit up, and a rare term crossed the wire's formal notification. That phrase has never been used outside of drills. Until now. Congress received the update at 4.30 a.m. A closed-door meeting was scheduled for dawn. Security teams locked down access points. Everyone inside those rooms knew the implication the planetary defense plan they'd been building for decades might finally get its test. For the next 72 hours, data poured in from telescopes in Hawaii, Chile, and Spain. Each refinement seemed to make things worse. For the first time in 20 years, an asteroid crossed the Torino scale threshold that triggers an official global defense coordination. The asteroid, initially dismissed as a minor threat, presented a perplexing puzzle that deepened with each new data point. What began as a routine celestial observation quickly escalated into a high-stakes geopolitical drama, revealing layers of secrecy and strategic implications far beyond a simple space rock. The sheer persistence of the space defense protocol, even after the immediate Earth strike threat was ruled out, sent shivers down the spines of those privy to the intelligence. Three days after the all-clear signal, the briefings continued, not just within NASA's familiar confines, but extending into the shadowed halls of the Pentagon's Advanced Threat Division. The lingering question hung heavy in the air, a chilling echo of the unknown. If the danger was truly over, what justified the sustained, almost paranoid, level of secrecy? Perhaps the asteroid was never the true antagonist. Instead, it might have been a cosmic harbinger, a trigger event that unmasked a far more profound and imminent threat. Its physical characteristics were modest, a rocky mass ranging from 40 to 100 meters across, roughly the size of a bustling downtown office tower. Small enough to be overlooked, yet undeniably large enough to obliterate a major city, its potential for devastation was not to be underestimated. The first hint of something amiss emerged in January 2025, 
Orbital updates began to display a peculiar pattern, not the smooth, predictable arc of a celestial body unimpeded by external forces, but a subtle, almost imperceptible jitter. It was as if an unseen hand was gently, yet consistently, altering its trajectory. This anomaly defied conventional astrophysical explanations, igniting a quiet alarm within the scientific community. NASA, recognizing the gravity of the situation, deployed its most formidable asset, the James Webb Space Telescope. This was an unprecedented move. Webb, primarily designed for deep space observation, had never been tasked with such a precise, near-Earth infrared lock. The images that filtered back were grainy, yet undeniably revelatory. The light curve, a critical indicator of an object's rotation and surface properties, flickered erratically. This unusual pulsation suggested either an exceptionally irregular spin or, far more unsettlingly, something on its surface intermittently reflecting light, something artificial. By February, the data had been refined. The asteroid, it was now clear, would indeed miss Earth. However, its revised trajectory brought it dangerously close to the moon, raising a new set of alarms. A 4% chance of a lunar impact in 2032 might sound insignificant to the uninitiated, but to those who understood the mechanics of celestial collisions, it was a terrifying prospect. An impact of that magnitude could carve a crater nearly a kilometer wide, launching an untold amount of debris into lunar orbit. This ejected material, traveling at immense velocities, posed an existential threat to the burgeoning infrastructure encircling the moon, capable of shredding satellites and rendering vast swaths of space unusable. This was the pivotal moment the Pentagon, with its vast network of intelligence and strategic interests, entered the fray. Lunar orbit was not, as many perceived, an empty void. It was rapidly becoming the next critical frontier for military infrastructure, a strategic chessboard where future conflicts might be won or lost. A strike on the moon, even an indirect one, could cripple the very backbone of global connectivity. GPS systems, critical communications networks, and even the ambitious Artemis lunar bases. Then, in their crucial planning stages, when Congress received the updated assessment, Moon Impact, they didn't interpret it as a reassuring safe scenario. Instead, the words resonated with a far more ominous implication, strategic vulnerability. And with that understanding, the Space Defense Protocol, a contingency plan once thought to be purely theoretical, was activated for real. Across the defense network, status indicators flared to a vivid, urgent red. NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office, the last line of Earth's defense against cosmic threats, issued an action notice, a top-tier priority alert that bypassed all bureaucratic layers. Simultaneously, the Space Mission Planning Advisory Group an international consortium of experts, convened an emergency session in Vienna. This was no longer an exercise, no longer a drill or a simulation designed to test readiness. These were real timelines, real launch windows being calculated with frantic precision, and real mission concepts being formulated, each with the weight of global security resting upon its feasibility. The asteroid, whatever its true nature, had irrevocably shifted the paradigm, ushering in an era where the threats from beyond Earth were no longer confined to the realm of science fiction. Congress authorized a multi-agency readiness posture, the first in recorded history under the space defense framework. Space Force entered coordination mode. Satellites began precision tracking. Classified simulations ran through every outcome. Within those briefings, one proposal caught attention a rapid deployment kinetic impactor, a direct descendant of NASA's 2022 DART mission. Another option, more controversial, used the word nuclear, a twin charge detonation, five to eight times the size of Hiroshima, designed to pulverize a rock before it hits. That paper existed. It was on the table. What the public didn't know is that this activation wasn't just about one object, it was about the system itself. The government was testing the world's first full planetary defense workflow. Detection, confirmation, activation, coordination, and if needed, deflection. Everything from ground telescopes to military satellites was synced for the first time. The system worked. But here's the twist during this same period. Several anomalies were detected in nearby orbits data signatures that didn't belong to YR4, but moved almost in parallel. The data logs revealed three faint tracks, all in similar orbital planes. They weren't large enough to trigger public alerts, 
but their timing aligned perfectly with YR-4's window. AI systems at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory began to flag these as potential co-travelers. The models labeled them unknown secondaries. In theory, that's nothing unusual debris, maybe small fragments. But what raised eyebrows was that the orbital behavior of two of them shifted erratically, like they were being tugged by microgravity anomalies or responding to non-gravitational forces like gas jets, the kind of movement seen in comets or controlled probes. No one said it out loud, but the memo trail makes it clear. Officials wanted to know whether YR-4 was part of something larger, a fragmented parent body, or worse, a cluster of impactors on staggered timelines. The incident marked a pivotal moment in the evolution of space defense, a period where theoretical protocols transitioned into urgent, real-world applications. It was during this critical juncture that the space defense protocol underwent unprecedented expansion, forging connections previously deemed unlikely or unnecessary. NASA's esteemed Planetary Defense Office, traditionally focused on celestial mechanics and asteroid tracking, found itself directly integrated with the Pentagon's Highly Classified Anomaly Monitoring Division. This unprecedented collaboration signified a profound shift in national security paradigms, recognizing that threats could originate not only from terrestrial adversaries, but also from the vast, uncharted expanse of space. For the first time in history, civilian and military tracking data were merged into a unified, comprehensive system. This audacious undertaking, later described by analysts as an unplanned stress test of the global space threat network, was born out of necessity. The convergence of these previously siloed data sets provided an unparalleled panoramic view of Earth's orbital environment, revealing both known and unknown entities with startling clarity. The lessons gleaned from this intensive data fusion and rapid response exercise were profound, offering insights that promised to fundamentally reshape our understanding of planetary defense for the next decade and beyond. Concurrently, and with a discretion characteristic of its operations, the Pentagon's All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, AARO, quietly initiated a critical software update. This enhancement involved the seamless integration of NASA's extensive space object database into AARO's existing systems. The immediate impetus for this technological merger was pragmatic. A significant number of unidentified objects that had been meticulously tracked in orbit were, through this cross-referencing, reclassified. Many of these enigmatic readings, initially defying explanation, were successfully correlated with known asteroid catalogs, effectively reducing the number of truly anomalous entries. However, a persistent, intriguing subset of these orbital readings resisted such straightforward categorization. A handful of these observed objects continued to defy easy labeling. Their trajectories and behaviors were inconsistent with the predictable physics governing natural celestial bodies, yet they also bore no resemblance to the characteristics of known, cataloged satellites. While the possibility remained that these anomalies were merely space debris or, more simply, sensor ghosts fleeting, erroneous readings the sheer coincidence was enough to ignite concern within the highest echelons of government. The simultaneous occurrence of a near-Earth asteroid scare a palpable reminder of cosmic vulnerability overlapping with these unexplained orbital tracks, served to keep Congress on edge underscoring the urgent need for continued vigilance and expanded capabilities in the ever-evolving domain of space defense. By late February, the space defense protocol remained active. Officially, it was about improving communication efficiency. Unofficially, it was a readiness test for multi-domain space threats, natural and otherwise. And that makes sense. Because the line between planetary defense and national security is now paper thin. The same satellites that track asteroids also track missile launches. The same telescopes that look for rocks can detect craft. Congress wasn't preparing for aliens, they were preparing for anything. Three months later, the follow-up hearings made it official. The Space Subcommittee convened under the title, From Detection to Deflection. Lawmakers grilled NASA and the Defense Department. How did we not see YR-4 sooner? Why did we rely on luck instead of preparation? The answers weren't reassuring. Only about 40% of dangerous asteroids larger than 140 meters have been found. The rest are still out there, dark, silent, waiting. Congress pushed NASA to accelerate the long-delayed NEO Surveyor Telescope, launch now planned for 2027. 
At the same time, they authorized more integration with Space Force specifically, joint training for rapid orbital response. Planetary defense had officially crossed into the world of military doctrine. One phrase stood out in the hearings. Planetary defense is now part of national defense. For the first time, protecting Earth from space hazards is treated as strategic policy, not just science. And, quietly, budgets shifted. Funding appeared under new classifications. Space domain preparedness. Behind all the politics, one undeniable truth emerged. We dodged a bullet this time. But the next one could come without warning. Inside classified labs, simulations ramped up. A highly confidential proposal, recently leaked, outlines a revolutionary dual detonation model. Two precisely controlled nuclear bursts strategically deployed near an asteroid's surface. This innovative approach is designed to impart a gentle yet decisive push, altering the asteroid's trajectory without the catastrophic risk of fragmentation. Early theoretical test models of this concept demonstrated remarkable efficacy, performing beautifully under simulated conditions. Consequently, Congress, recognizing the profound implications for planetary security, authorized further in-depth study, discreetly subsuming it under the innocuous sounding umbrella of planetary contingency readiness. The very notion of detonating nuclear weapons in the unforgiving void of space, even in defense of our planet, would have been met with incredulity and outright opposition a mere two decades ago. Such an act was once the sole province of science fiction. Yet, in a testament to humanity's evolving understanding of existential threats, this audacious concept has now been quietly, but permanently, codified into defense doctrine. This seismic shift profoundly redefines the true meaning of the space defense protocol. It transcends its initial scope of mere telescopic observation and data analysis. It represents the crucial first stride towards the monumental endeavor of constructing a genuine planetary shield, a bulwark against the cosmic slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Throughout history, humanity has grappled with an intrinsic fear of celestial phenomena. In ancient civilizations, the spectacle of skyfire was invariably interpreted as the wrath of vengeful gods. The Babylonians, meticulously tracking celestial omens, painstakingly carved their interpretations into clay tablets, seeking to decipher divine will. The Egyptians, in their profound reverence for the heavens, forged sacred blades from the rare and mysterious iron of meteorites. While they feared the heavens, their understanding and technological capabilities were woefully insufficient to actively defend against its perceived malevolence. Today, for the first time in our species' history, humanity possesses not only the understanding, but also the technological prowess to actively confront these celestial threats. The appearance of 2024 YR4 was not merely an event that triggered a predefined protocol. It was a watershed moment, signaling a profound shift in our collective evolution. We are no longer passive spectators in the grand, unpredictable cosmic game. We have emerged as active, decisive players. Looking towards the future, the very system that so recently averted disaster holds the potential to safeguard us again. NASA's newly deployed, highly advanced telescopes, the Space Force's increasingly sophisticated orbital defenses, and the United Nations' crucial coordination groups are actively collaborating to construct a tangible shield around our vulnerable planet. However, a pressing question lingers. Was YR4 an isolated anomaly, a fortunate fluke, or merely the harbinger, the first pebble, in a far more tempestuous and larger cosmic storm yet to come. Despite the dazzling array of our technological advancements, humanity remains precariously balanced, often just one lucky break away from an unforeseen disaster. While the space defense protocol undeniably worked, its success inadvertently unveiled the inherent fragility of our existence. This stark reality has not escaped the attention of Congress, nor NASA. And now, it has become painfully clear to the global populace. Humanity has drawn a definitive line in the cosmic expanse, and this time, we are unequivocally prepared to defend it with every fiber of our collective being. The universe, in its boundless and indifferent majesty, has just issued a poignant warning shot. And next time, should the need arise, we might be compelled to return fire.